Hello Pirates, it's been a long time since I did a video about turrets so we have a lot of different new turrets, a new mechanic, uh, new specials I thought it's time for a new Battle Pirates turret review for 2018 A lot has changed, we now have ships with over 2 million armor Deflection numbers are just crazy at hundreds of thousands or actually millions now. Older turrets like tier 6, tier 5 and below really can't do anything except if they have some tactical value and I'll talk about three of them. The Glacial Turret, the Cold Snap and the Elite Countermeasure. Tier 7 turrets now, they are different beasts. They are heavily dependent on auras and bonuses instead of just on their own firepower. The way you set them up and even the way how many you redeem, it's a key factor determining your success, as we'll see. When defending, you got to think, what are you up against? So you're pretty much up against, right now, Onslaughts, uh, Missile Storm Cruiser and, and the Poseidon Mauler, using these four armors. MC Plates 1 and 2 both giving a lot of ballistic and penetrating deflection. Compound plate gives ballistic penetrative explosive and D6U for the other three damage types, which have been de-emphasized by Kixai in the past six months, pretty much. So I expect that to change soon. These armors, they are not limited, so you can use as many as you want, but they have a new property called Equip Cap. You can see it's the last number on each one of them. It tells you how many you can put on a single ship at most. So, for instance, uh, you get a, an onslaught with five armor slots. You could have at most three MC plates one or two MC plates two or three of any of the other ones. And, and you've got to work within those constraints, which is kind of smart. You know, it keeps uh, a bit of a tactic element when designing ships that I appreciate. But... It has unintended consequences, as we'll see soon. As a base defender, uh, here are the weapons you have, the relevant weapons you have. I'll be very clear here. If you're a new player defending against low-level conquerors, it's one thing. But the moment you're over level 50, and especially like level, over level 80, when it, you're free food, I mean, everybody's going to attack you and many people will be attacking you with the top ships in game. So anything less than these turrets, you're barely going to scratch their paints. So all these turrets are limited. There's a maximum number you can get. They are not widely available at any time, unlike the armors we saw before. Those armors are all in Forsaken Mission. Pretty much any active player can get them. These turrets, you got to be in the game at the right time with the right amount of points so you can get one, two, maybe three or four of them. Some are being released in raids, some in bounty. Some have been released in both. Some haven't been released in quite a while, such as the Adder Strike. I left the Adder Strike and the Epic Cataclysm Mortar at the bottom left. They are weak right now, but they can still kick some ass against ill-prepared attackers. If they're not well prepared for explosive or corrosive damage, they can still do something. Sometimes I hurt attackers with them, but good attackers with well-designed fleets will be immune to them, just to be clear. Everything in white are turrets, everything in yellow are tactical choices and things you have in game. You don't really have to win them because they're all either a choice in game, a free choice, such as the base faction, or they are researchable, such as fire support too. Everything else you have to redeem whenever they're offered, and if you don't have them right now, you just gotta wait until they're offered again. The Glacial Turret is an old one that's still good, pretty much because, not because of the damage, the damage is irrelevant here, so all you wanna do is make sure it has range, it has splash, and it reloads as fast as possible. What you're looking after is what's in the first line, the buffs or debuffs it gives the attacker so it's going to slow their reload it's going to slow their combat and turn speed giving you more time to damage them so it's a tactical turret put it in a place it cannot be sniped 
and it's going to outrange any attacker with a max range of 141 when you use the DTR transformer. I recommend using the Radium Reserve Special for reload and Xenthium Shell for projectile speed. Next one, it's also no turret, um, the Code Snap. It disables tactical auras for a few seconds, so and it outranges the attackers as well. If if the attackers are incoming with stuff like their tactical focus, focus tactical module, or a microwave dampener tactical module, this turret will disable that for a few seconds, leaving them exposed to more damage or weakening how much damage they do to your base for a few seconds. Again, tactical, it's not going to win the battle for you, it's just part of a strategy. The Elite Countermeasure Turret um, up front has a super long build time. I think it's like 30 days, 28 days to build it. So even with base parts, it's still going to take you two weeks. It counters UAVs, rockets, missile, mortars, the most complete countermeasure turret in game. And it's splash based. So even if the attacker's weapons have flak evade, it's not going to work against this turret. The specials you want are either everything you have to increase splash. I give two examples here with the Sulfide Deployer and the old one x You see those two on the bottom picture. Or you can also use Countermeasure Target. It's the special on the left for more range. And then up to you if you want more splash or if you want to give it some resistance, then you can use the XM special. It's a good turret to put on water, so use the UTT transformer, uh, as you can see on the bottom right. And then it also detects submarines. It's not going to hurt subs, but it helps you detect them so other stuff in your base can hurt them. I run three of these turrets in my base. Some people run four, all of them on water. It tends to neutralize mortar attackers pretty well. It's not, not going to kill 100% of the mortars, but slows them down. Now, tier 7 turrets. These turrets alone, like if you only have one of them, it's not going to work. They, they have literally no value alone. They won't hurt attackers. Their magic happens when you have a whole bunch of them of the same damage type. So... Think of it as a wolf pack. You just got to have a bunch of them together of the same type. They'll run together as a pack. And even as they die during the attack, all the bonuses you had when the, the battle started are still active. So focus on one if you can have it all. And each turret you have will add 25% damage. So whatever damage a turret does of that type, you're going to multiply Time, you know, times 1.25, then times 1.25, then times 1. Point, for however many turrets of that type and tier 7 you have. Okay, so that works on top of the faction. So it's important to select the faction bonus as well. Pick a faction. So right now, the only two factions that matter in this game are Forsaken or Legion, depending whether you want to privilege ballistic turrets or penetrative turrets. The other three right now are not relevant. Fire Support 2, the most important base special I'd say in game right now, because that one also adds 15% damage to each, for each aura, right? So you can see an example here on the right hand side. Uh, the four turrets in the center, actually three, because one of them is just defensive. But those three turrets are being covered by five auras you can count right there's one orange aura from the outpost covering all four one from this warehouse all four and, and anyway you look you're going to see they're all covered by four auras while these ones here on the left side are only covered by three so whatever damage you see in there you're gonna for these two do times 115 times 115 times 115 three times for these three if you had a fourth here for all four, you do that five times. And that's on top of the tier bonus aura. So it's a lot of math. Okay. And, and we'll get you a solution to that in a moment.
But if you want, here's an idea how you can set up your island so you can have four very powerful turrets. And really, that's pretty much all you need. So like I said, a lot of math, hard to do. All those one type, you know, times 1.25 multiple times and times 1.15 multiple times and the special and the faction. So Wayne and George, like, created and tested this turret damage calculator and it's awesome it's brand new released today may 18. Uh, you have the link in the video description so you can click from there so all you have to do is you tell the type ballistic penetrating explosive whatever pick the turret pick the specials you don't even need to pick them all just those relevant to the damage you're doing transformer how many turrets of that same type you have if they are tier 7 what faction is your base? So you should pick the same faction to all of them. Unless you're simulating stuff. How many fire supports, two and one, do you have? Remember, you can only have five of those combined. Okay, so no point in putting five and five. It's not going to work. Then the calculator will tell you what is the damage per projectile normal. And if the turret has a crit crit hit, like the, the how howitzer because of the EM Rayo 3 has a chance of a critical, that it's going to calculate that here for you. I'm going to show you a quick video now using the turret calculator so you'll see how it works. This is how you can use the new turret damage calculator Wayne and George prepared. So let's say you have a turret in your game. In my case, it's a Vulture 2. You can see here. I'm using some specials I have. I'm using this DTR transformer. And I, so now I have to put that in the turret calculator, which I have open in a different tab. So that's a penetrating turret. It's the Vulture 2. It's in alphabetical order, so it's fairly easy. Vulture. One special I have is thermal barrack casing 4. The other one is fire support M. Now I can't remember the third name, so I just go back in the game tab over and okay, frontline platform MC. Go back again, alphabetical order. So frontline platform MC. That's the one. Okay, you don't actually have to put all specials, but you have to put all specials that affect somehow damage. Okay, if I had a resistance special here, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to increase or decrease damage at all. Uh, I'm using the DTR transformer to get range, so that brings damage down a little bit. Now, this turret benefits from the group bonus, tier 7 group bonus. And I know I have four executioners, one vulture, one halo, so I have a total of six turrets. Uh, my faction is forsaken for ballistics, so it's not going to benefit. And I have three fire support choose on that turret. That's my damage. It's not calculating for some reason the critical hit damage. It should because the vulture has a 50% chance when the enemy is weak. Okay, so I'm going to be doing 1.1 medium damage and when it's critical it doubles so let's say 2.2 2.3 is that enough the answer is probably no because the the missile cruiser gets well over 3 million deflection and even the the onslaught can get 2 million deflection so now i know even on a crit hit this turret will not do any real damage so what matters to me is just have it somewhere in the base anywhere as bubble pad so it buffers the other guys now if I had all eight turrets that's the maximum I could have and if I switch my faction to Legion and I put this guy surrounded by five fire supports oh you see now I have 2.9 on the normal hit which doubles to almost 6 million on a critical hit in that case you can absolutely do real damage to incoming 
st uh, missile storm cruisers and onslaughts. So until then, bubble pad. So that's the spirit. You can do multiple turrets, right? You can scroll to the right here, do up to five turrets at a time. Reload the page, it comes back blank. And then you can uh, do five more. Right, so now you understand how the calculator works. I'm going to use it to compare and explain each turret. The first one, the most powerful turret in current game is the Howitzer 6 turret. We just call it Howie 6. Um, currently, you can have at most six tier 7 ballistic turrets, four Howies and two blunderbusses. I'll talk about the blunderbusses in a moment. I set up mine with EM Rayo 3 heavy ballistic shells, and then either priority targeting or alloy XM for more resistance. This turret, uh, when set up properly, will be dealing, even after deflect, uh, sorry, if then siege battery uh, and everything, 927,000 damage. When, when a crit hit happens, it's gonna be dealing 3.7 million damage. When you compare, Here's a likely build for a missile storm cruiser and a likely build for an onslaught, just the armors. Of course, it can be set up differently, so that's just for comparison purposes. Um, so if you're gonna have, and that's on the left, you can see here it's a Howie 6 with only three fire supports. It's gonna be dealing 3.7 million damage on crits. That is enough to damage onslaughts as they can be at most at 3.3 million ballistic deflection. If you're able to surround that Howitzer with six fire supports, sorry, five fire supports, and remember, your faction is forsaken, you might be dealing 4.9 million on a crit hit versus that much deflection. So at, some attackers eventually will come in with one where there's no U armor and it's another MC1 plate, so that deflection goes up. In which case, the first setup with only three fire supports probably going to be ineffective, but the second one still hurts. So I'm not going to be doing this exercise for all turrets, I'm just doing it for the howitzer, so you understand how you should go to the turret calculator, see what damage you can get. Then you can go in the shipyard in design mode, try to play with armors and see what deflection attackers can have so you know whether or not the turret should be surrounded by fire support and it's, it's a strategic turret very important in your base or whether the turret will never actually be able to hurt in which case just put it up front in the bubble pad here's the blunderbuss uh, it's part of the same group as the howie so having four howies two blunderbusses makes it a lot of, uh, very effective I changed specials a little bit. I used the ballistic recoil suppressor and either the ZU panel here or some splash special or some resistance special. Because it's a short range turret, uh, you may choose to sacrifice damage for range. So at least it fires. And if the attacker doesn't have the right setup, it's, it's gonna hurt. With DTR, you get 115 range. Without, with AT, for instance, you get only 105, so most attackers would outrange you. On a crit hit, it's going to be doing 1.2 million. As we just saw, it's not enough to damage high-end, properly built ships, but it will hurt bad setups. So put it up front. The Executioner, the second best turret in, in game right now, uh, this one benefits from penetrative tier 7 bonus. Right now we have up to 8 of these turrets. Uh, 2 halos, 2 vultures, and 4 executioner 2. When set up properly, so the maximum damage you can get from it, it's when you use thermobaric casing 4, frontline platform MC, and fire support platform M. AT transformer, you have all 8 turrets in that group and you're surrounded by five fire supports too, and your base faction is legion. So you're never gonna be able to get max out of both the Howie and the Executioner because you gotta pick a faction. If you pick legion, you will be dealing 4.4 million damage even after siege battery, and that is enough to hurt 
even a missile storm cruiser set up with four pieces of armor. If you put a fifth, uh, still gonna hurt, not as much. This is a very good turret to have. Just remember, there's no point in having half executioners, half howies, or half ballistic, half penetrative. You gotta go all in one group to get those numbers. That's how the game is today. Personally, I don't like it, but that's how it is. Halo and Vulture, you saw when I was playing with the turret calculator, I talked about the Vulture a little bit. Uh, it can be useful in the right setup, otherwise it's not. For me, personally, it's not. And the Halo, no matter what you do, it it's never going to really hurt enemies. Just put it up front as bubble pad. Don't use strategic space around fire support, warehouses, outposts to use the, the Halo in there. Just put it somewhere where it's going to die quick and help you bubble. I hope you found this video useful. That's all for today. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like that. Turn on notifications if you want to be notified when new videos come out. Some people don't like that. Some do. Leave questions and comments here on YouTube and I'll address most of them within 48 hours. See you next time, folks.